Thank you. Yes. And I'm very happy to be in this beautiful country and with uh, warm Mediterranean people here, uh, with distinguished scientists, of course. But I'm also very unhappy that uh, from the beginning of this session, everything has been told that nothing is left to me. Uh, but I'll, I'll be going very fast, I would say. So this is uh, the first picture that you can find in Google. And if you Google, it says that uh, for Arno bomb you need electrons, which are coherent. The states are co-propagating, and the particles do not feel the magnetic field, but they experience the vector potential. Okay. You have seen such figures going saying that these edge states, which are called Landa or Butiker type edge states, are going from one side to the other side. They are interfering, and then you can see this interference pattern. Okay, but till now it was always taken like God-given edge states. So what are really these edge states? I spent like seven years, and I still don't understand what they are. So let's start from this uh, Landau uh, quantization. I mean, this is simple mathematics. You can reduce the two-dimensional problem to one-dimensional oscillator problem. Then finally, you have many fault degenerate uh, edge state, uh, sorry, uh, Landau levels. And then you can uh, plot your magnetic confinement with a certain uh, center coordinate, which is defined by the momentum in the y direction. Y will be my current direction. Fine, then. What you can do as a first approximation, you can add a confinement potential, something like this, and do Thomas Fermi approximation, assuming that the potential, confined potential is changing slowly on the length scale of magnetic length, which is essentially the extent of the wave function. Then uh, for a certain uh, momentum, you can place your uh, confinement here, and then this will be first lambda level, second lambda level. And then if you have many of them, uh, you can just make another approximation saying that the momentum is quasi one, uh, quasi continuous. Then you can say that, yeah, now I have my Landau levels in, in space. Fine. So this is my lowest Landau level, first Landau level, etc. Then the distance between them, which I, since I'm going to neglect the spin, it will be h bar omega c. Then you come to the Landau or particular state. So you, you put your Fermi energy here, then the Landau level cuts, uh, the Fermi energy cuts the Landau level here so that you have a high density of states, therefore you can transfer current from there. Fine. And then if you look at the density distribution, so this is position versus density, or we can call it a feeling factor, you see that it's quite funny because it's zero here, then it's suddenly at feeling factor two. So there's something wrong and we will come back to that. But what you can do is that you can change the Fermi energy and then change the uh, cutting points or your, your edge states, and then you can change your density profile if it's true. Or you can change the magnetic field, do the same thing. Fine. So then finally you get these uh, chiral edge states going one direction and the other direction, and by counting the number of edge states, you say that I'm in pin factor 2, 4, whatever plateau. But uh, then you can put some uh, constri constrictions on your sample and then uh, play with these edge states. Fine. Now, uh, as I said, it's a bit uh, strange because you cannot keep this electron distribution electrostatically uh, stable. So what you have to do is to include interactions and uh, single particle direct plumb interactions because your uh, zero magnetic field density profile was something like this. Then it should be in something in between. And Shklovsky and Shklovsky did these calculations couple to 20 years ago and then obtained this picture. Okay, this part will be important. Then you have to solve the Poisson's equation at the same time for given boundary conditions. And then, as the Riato showed that you, that you have some fully uh, occupied states which are incompressible, and you have some uh, compressible states which behave like a metal. So let's look at these two because this will be important later on. Compressible state is where your Fermi energy is equal to Landau level. You have high density of states, metal-like good screening, Group velocity is zero, however, because it's a metal, there is no potential or the potential variation. And then uh, it's, a, it's a metal because uh, then there is a finite long term resistance there should be for normal electrons. In the incompressible strip, however, you have no density of states at the Fermi level, so you can say it's an it's a insulator-like state. Fine, poor screening, but fortunately there will be a finite drift velocity that you can carry equilibrium current at this point. And it's insulator-like because the long term conductivity vanishes. And this is something interesting. So now let's go to the numerics and do uh, such self-consistent calculations. Give me the background charts. I calculate the effective potential from Poisson, then calculate the Schrodinger equation. 
and just go through these uh, self-consistent equations or make a further approximation, uh, single particle Thomas Fermi <laughs> Poisson approximation and obtain without then the uh, wave functions but only the energy dispersion and delta functions as wave functions, fine. Now this is the playground, you have this two-dimensional electron gas in a growth crystal and then you apply a current between these two contacts, measure between these two and then see quantum Hall effect which was introduced before. But essentially, the, the numerics or the, the thing that has to be done is you just start with this donor distribution, the potential, put your Fermi energy, according to that, distribute your electrons, calculate the Hartree potential, add that Hartree potential <coughs> to the total potential. Finally, you have, sorry, the screen potential, which is something like this black curve. Fine. If you do it properly numerically, uh, which is not a so easy task, but if you do it, you really see that very, at very, magnetic, uh, high, very high magnetic fields, you have the lowest Landau level occupied, the system is metal, the system is compressible, everything fine. But when you reduce the magnetic field, you start to occupy this, uh, you, you start to have some gaps between uh, two Landau levels at certain positions, there you have the incompressible strips where the density doesn't change, but the potential changes. Fine. Now, uh, it's a very short step, I should I would like to uh, relate this with incompressible strips with the quantum hole plateaus, which I claim and cannot explain at the moment uh, because of time, that if there is an incompressible strip somewhere in the sample, and I'm saying once more, if there is an incompressible strip somewhere in the sample, you are in the plateau. The resistance vanishes, longitudinal one, and the whole resistance is quantized. But unfortunately, uh, when, you're changing, when you are changing the magnetic field, you also change the positions of these incompressible strips and their widths. And if the width of the incompressible strip is now smaller than the uh, wave function, then essentially you don't have an incompressible state. You cannot call it an, anymore an incompressible state. Fine. So by changing the magnetic field, you have incompressible strip, non-incompressible strip, incompressible strip, no. And you go from plateau to other plateau level. So you can really do calculations in between two uh, transition re uh, plateau regions. But now let's come to the edges, which is very important in defining the edge states. So that's the point. I can do it by putting gates on top, or I can just physically cut the edges and then see what comes out. We did this for quantum point contacts because it was very important for uh, mach zander type interferometers. And then you can clearly see that if you define by etching, then you have very strong uh, surface charges at the side of the sample. So this is my two deck. You have the surface charges here. The potential is very steep which causes very narrow and compressible strips, and then that destroys the whole effect, quantum hole effect, I mean. Or by gates, you can do it more smoothly, and you can control it much easily. Fine. So there is another way to do this, etching and, trench, uh, etching and gating, which is trench gate, and this is the real case for, uh, from Camino. Uh, then you start with growth parameters, numerics, then you get the surface pattern, then I give you back the density distribution. And then you compare with the experimental result without magnetic field, and what we see is that uh, the, the, their estimation of the electron density with our uh, calculations is almost perfect. Uh, then, if you have the machinery, then you can do it for all the mass senders or whatever, and then obtain. But what happens with the interference? So, as I said, if you have this, uh, this is like, now I can explain this a bit more. This is x, uh, y versus x, and if it's black, I have the incompressible strip. So let's say this is my bone, and I have an incompressible strip, which means I am in the plateau. If I'm in the plateau, there will be no interference because there is no partitioning. Fine. If I come somewhere here where you can have scattering, but since they're incompressible, it's not so easy to scatter into this state. Then I should reduce still the magnetic field, and then obtain something like this or that very thin incompressible strip. And then now we can agree or argue whether it's really incompressible or not. And in this case, you start to have some interference. This is what I claimed a couple of years ago. And this is essentially what uh, also uh, Bernd told, uh, that you have the plateau here, you have the interference here. You have the plateau here, you have the interference there. And that means the interference is really between the landauer butiker type uh, almost equilibrium edge states. I say type because they are not really one-dimensional channels without any uh, scattering. These are very uh, narrow channels, which is a compressible state, which carries the current at equilibrium or almost equilibrium. Fine. So this, is, this will be the main picture, saying that if I'm in the plateau, upper side, there will be no interference because the bulk is completely incompressible. 
if there are two incompressible strips which are well developed, then there will be again no interference. Uh, then there will be Arnold bomb interference in some parts where what uh, Bernd also told, and there will be uh, interference through the incompressible strips what uh, Deviatov did. So with pushing, you can put some electrons from here to there. So you are pushing and then trying to interfere the properties of them. So this is how the current distribution looks like. Out of plateau, the current is like metal, like it's the uh, Drude model. Then when you enter the plateau, the, all the current is flowing at the bulk. So this is like localization picture. Then if you come, come to the lower part of the plateau, the current is confined to the edges, to the incompressible strips. Then if you go out of the plateau, you have still some spikes at the edges. And if you are really putting some non-equilibrium current there, you can carry current and do all these beautiful experiments. And all these beautiful experiments means I was doing these calculations and I was really not so sure whether I was uh, doing something correct. So I went to the lab and almost to destroy a cryostat here with 14 testers. But finally, things worked and I had the uh, results, which are uh, uh, not about interference but quantum wall effect. So essentially, this is what you are doing. So you have a former incompressible strip, which became very narrow compared to the magnetic, uh, magnetic length. Then you can, uh, because of this slope here, you, your center coordinate is shifted. They overlap. And if, they have, have, if you have an overlap or scattering probability, you have the interference. I think uh, this is almost the end. And I would like to thank uh, to my students and co-workers in Trakia, which contributed a lot to this uh, work. Uh, and this is a paper that was not accepted in PRL, so we just burned it. And uh, you are always welcome to uh, Turkey, and thank you a lot. And uh, you can find some more details in this uh, place. Thank you. <laughs> I'm also hungry. <laughs> Yes, I think I mean, we have discussed this with uh, Professor Butiker, and uh, there is some inconsistency in the sense that in Landauer Butiker picture, you always have edge states. In my picture, I only have one edge state at a given time. I'm talking about a quantum hole plateau where the uh, filling factor is, let's say, four. In Landauer Butiker, you will have two and four. In my picture, or not my, but uh, in screening theory, uh, you have only one, which carries all the current. But if you are now doing some non-equilibrium experiments or calculations, then you can still fill the outermost edge channel. So that also survives. Remember this peak there? Although there is no real non-scattering state, but there is still a local minimum resistance state there. So it's somehow consistent, but not having many edge states. In, in only case of quantum wall effect, I think. So we are all hungry and we close the session by thanking all the speakers.